Hello, my name is Perry Tao, and I'm a Systems and Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. And today I'm going to talk to you about automotive hot rod and wettable flanks packaging advancements. So we'll start with an overview of automotive hot rod and wettable flanks and explain what they are. Then we'll talk about some of the performance benefits of automotive hot rod. And we'll get into the layout techniques to minimize EMI when using devices with this package. And then also best practices for thermal layout of hot rod devices. So first, we'd like to just describe how uh, automotive hot rod package devices are built. So just as a comparison to some of the more standard um, IC packages, on the left we have what is called the standard Wirebond QFN package. Here this purple is the dye, and this black is the, the mold compound that you see on the outside of an IC. And this is uh, these are the leads, this yellow color. These are copper. And so, in a standard wire bond QFN, there's a bond wire that connects these leads to the, the IC. So these leads, or, or pins, are what get soldered down to the PCB. And so we have the PCB down here, and then this blue would be copper on the PCB, and then this gray is the solder. So this is what it looks like when a standard wire bond QFN package is soldered down onto the PC board. So another type of package is called WCSP, and it's wafer chip scale package, and this is where the die itself has just solder bumps um, on it when you when you first purchase it, and then you basically set it down on top of copper on a PCB, and then you just solder it right down. So the die is connected directly to the PCB by the so by the solder. Flip chip on lead QFN is very similar in that it takes the concept of WCSP and then solders it down into a lead frame so it's like this die soldered down onto pins directly like kind of like over here and so then these pins themselves are soldered to the board so it's kind of combining these two types of packages and it's called the standard name for this is called flip chip on lead and TI has a kind of its own flavor of of flip chip on lead that's called hot rod and that's refers to the fact that in our flip chip on lead packages we have longer bars that make it more suitable and better for power applications so there's a lot of advantages to uh, using this flip chip on lead QFN package um, in particular for automotive applications and that's what I'm going to get into uh, dis and describe later here are two photos of what a hot rod package looks like so this is the LM53625 or the LM53635, and they're the same package. Um, and it's a f these are photos are blown up quite a bit. It's actually just four millimeters by five millimeters. It has 22 pins. It's a QFN flip chip on lead hot rod package, and you can see it just looks like a rectangle rectangle from the top, and on the bottom you can see all the pins, and you see some of these pins are longer. Um, these these long bars, this is what makes it a, a hot rod type flip chip on lead package. If you look really closely, you can see that up here there's this uh, line and it's, you can also see it on the other edges too and that's uh, a step cut and that's actually what uh, adds the wettable flanks to this package. And so I'm going to describe what that means in the next few slides. So wettable flanks is basically what we're doing to in, in ensure that when you have a good solder joint, you get side wetting. So that means that the you do, the solder will flow up the side of the, the chip. And uh, this the reason why this is important is because it enables 100% automotive visual inspection assembly process. So after you solder things down to a PC board, you need to inspect it. Um, if you don't have a good solder fillet on the side of the IC, there's no way to make sure that it's actually bonded uh, underneath unless you do x-ray. And so if you want to avoid x-ray inspection, then the best thing to do is to get wettable flanks and so you can ensure that the solder flows up. So there's a couple different ways of doing wettable flanks. So one of them is to cut a little dimple into each pin. So on the right side here, this is a standard lead. And here is a wettable flank with a slot in it that's cut into it. And this is kind of the side view. 
and this is standard lead bottom view and this is slotted lead bottom view and you can see this little dimple it's it's cut into the the lead and it's also plated and so the the difference between this area here and this area here is that this area ha is plated and so it doesn't oxidize and so that means that the solder can flow up it easily and it bonds well to it whereas this cut up here above it the copper is cr corroded and so it doesn't um, it doesn't the solder will not flow as easily up it so another way of doing wettable flanks which is what is done with the LM53625 and LM53635 is a step cut and that's basically where you just make a cut all the way along the length of the the whole side of the IC and it's it goes through both the mold compound as well as the pins and this is a, a on the right is a zoom in of this area and you can see this is just cut here it's cut on all four sides of the chip and again after it's cut it's replated and so that there's this doesn't oxidize whereas when it was cut previously with this copper it does oxidize so when you make this dimple or the step cut and then you replate it then what happens is that the solder can flow up easily and you get a nice solder fillet so on the left side is just a standard QFN without wettable flanks and you can see there's there's a little ball of solder on the side and it flows up a little bit but not that high up the the pin and that's because the pin itself is oxidized right so on the right side here you can see that the solder flows all the way up to the the top of the side cut and so when you look at it from the side you can see there's this nice what they call a toe fillet and this toe fillet is what ensures that you can use a good uh, just optical inspection of the solder joints to ensure that your IC is soldered properly so with a standard QFN sometimes you get a solder fillet but sometimes you don't and, uh, and then I think that and so you can't tell if uh, the IC is actually soldered well unless you do an x-ray inspection okay so that's the basics of uh, wettable flanks and why you would want it okay so let's get into automotive hot rod and talk about why you want hot rod so this package has a couple advantages the first one is that you have reduced the RDS on of the the package itself like in a standard QFN with bond wires the bond wires themselves add quite a bit of resistance and so now with automotive hot rod where we're taking the the silicon die and bonding it directly to the lead frame there's much less resistance also smaller size for the same size die we can make a smaller package uh, with uh, automotive hot rod versus a uh, standard wirebond QFN or wirebond TSSOP package and also reduce parasitic so you reduce the resistance but you also reduce the inductance as well of your package uh, when you get rid of the wire bonds and so reduced parasitics such as inductance means less switch node ringing and that means lower EMI and that's one of the major advantages of automotive hot rod and that's very important automotive applications because EMI is, is really important and, and minimizing EMI is very important okay now we're gonna focus on layout techniques for minimizing EMI so, I mean, the automotive hot rod package definitely helps with minimizing EMI, but uh, to take maximum advantage of it, there's a few things that uh, need to be kept in mind. So, just kind of as a, a start to, to give, give, get some thoughts on how the package affects uh, the EMI, we're going to look at the switch node ringing for different types of packages. So, um, this is five different oscilloscope shots of different types of packages um, different ICs as well and uh, you can see that the package definitely has an influence on how much switch node ringing you have so up here on the left we have a TSSOP with wire bond and because of the the leads on the package as well as the wire bonds inside the package you have quite a big uh, switch node ring down here you have a QFN wire bond so there's no leads on the package but uh, there's still wire bonds and so they add inductance and you can still see some ringing and then over here this is a flip chip on lead package and you can see the ringing is much less and this is, again is another type of flip chip on lead package which also has 
some ringing, but it's smaller, but it's also higher frequency than the ringing that you see with the wire bond package. So each of these uh, scope shots, by the way, I scaled them so that the their, the image of the, the trace would be the same size. Um, and this is actually the flip chip on lead hot rod package. And you can see for this device, the LM53635, there's very little ringing. And that's because of a combination of factors. One is definitely the, the hot rod package. Um, the other is the, the way we arrange the, the pins. And I'll talk about that in a minute. The other is just internally how fast we're switching the IC itself. So just to, to compare a QFN package, a uh, standard QFN with wire bond, right? I think that's the most important comparison because from the outside, these type of two types of chip, they look pretty similar, right? So on the left, this is when you have the wire bonds inside. You can see you get this ringing. And here, you also, you have a little bit of ringing, but it's extremely high frequency and extremely small amplitude. And you can see here, actually, the slew rate of the switch node is faster on the right side than on the left. And our, the dead time is also shorter. So this dead time from here to here versus this dead time here. And so those all help to increase efficiency as well, especially when you're switching at 2.1 megahertz, which is an important um, aspect of this because switching at 2.1 megahertz in an automotive application um, gets you out of the AM band and it also um, decreases the size of your power solution. Okay, so this is just a kind of a, a, a conceptual view of how you would do a layout using the LM53635, which has this hot rod package. And uh, so over here, this is an outline of the IC. And so one of the unique things about the LM53635 that we could do because of the hot rod package is that we could have the input voltage pins on both sides okay and then so this is the VN pin and then these this is the ground pins and so you see VN and ground on both sides of the IC on the top and the bottom and then what we've done is put input capacitors small high frequency input capacitors on both the top and bottom and the reason that you want to do this is so that you can minimize this loop so this loop from the VN to the ground through this capacitor is what reduces the helps minimize the inductance um, on that on the input to the switch node and then also helps reduce the switch node ringing so having two loops is half the inductance of having just one loop right and so two inductances in parallel and so that uh, reduces your inductance in parallel and dramatically reduces the amount of energy that uh, will make the switch node ring so in addition to having two input capacitors, it's also helpful to have two output capacitors. Again, so that you can have two loops, right? two return paths through this output uh, cap back to this ground. And that will help minimize your switch node ring, I'm sorry, minimize your output voltage ripple. Okay, so one of the other, so those, this cap placement is probably the most important thing you can do to minimize the EMI in your power system design. Okay. So I think one of the other things that's important is so you have your top layer and that's um, could be ground in some spots but it's like the signal layer in general right and then you have your next layer underneath if it's like a four layer board which is often the case. The, it's a, to minimize EMI it's a really good idea to make this mid layer the, the close one closest to the top layer ground as well. And so that's so that if you have any vias that go down to ground, that uh, they minimize the loop for that, that ground layer. It's also advisable to keep this mid-layer ground intact as much as possible, even underneath the switch node. I think there's been some studies done, and uh, what we have found based on our like uh, 2.1 megahertz uh, DC-DC converter applications is that keeping this mid-layer close is is more important because then the any EMI that might be radiating from the switch node will tend to couple back into the mid one layer and not onto something else so because if it radiates from the switch node and it couples elsewhere then it becomes common mode noise 
but if it couples back into the ground plane, then it can be filtered by our differential input filter, which uh, pretty much all automotive um, power systems w would have. Okay, so these are like the three major things to consider when you are you know doing a layout for one of these hot rod devices. Okay, so this is just kind of a cross section of what a, the stack up would look like. So you have the top layer, which is the signal layer, this mid one layer, um, which we recommend making ground. Then these other two layers, this could be another signal layer and this could be uh, ground uh, or you know some, some other layer. But this, these, this, this layer is, can be important for helping to spread the heat across the board as well. Okay, so two other tips for layout using this uh, LM53635 hot rod package. One is uh, there's an A ground pin here on the bottom of the IC. And oftentimes, like this is the power ground here on the left and the right. And oftentimes, it's bridged underneath the IC for thermal reasons. And it can be tempting to this, take this A ground and connect it directly to the P ground. But uh, the problem when doing that is that you basically break the kind of the noise isolation. So the power ground noise starts to throw th flow through this A ground pin. So to avoid that, leave a, a break here. So don't bridge this A ground to this P ground. And if possible, you should encourage the we encourage that you you place the capacitors like for the the VCC and the bias so so that their ground is kind of separated except at one point. And that this point is should be after the the capacitors so that this uh, A ground is kind of buffered by these capacitors bef and before it uh, is connected to the P ground. right? Because we want to minimize the noise from the P ground from coupling into the A ground pin. Now I'd like to talk about thermals and layout. So here's a quick quiz. So on the left and the right I have two photos uh, they're thermal images of basically a, a board that is designed using the LM53635. So these are two different board designs and they're running under the same conditions. So 13 half volts input, 5 volt, 3 amps out. And you can see that the, the pattern of the heat distribution is very different. And so I deliberately uh, blocked off the, the, the actual temperature measurements. But uh, I think just based on the pattern that we see here on the right and the left, which layout it was a better layout and so I think if you think about it a little bit um, it actually turns out the the layout on the left is better and the, the reason why it's a better one you can see here like the temperature of the IC is like 64 degrees uh, whereas over here is like 83 degrees and there's a couple reasons for for why there's such a large temperature difference so one aspect of it is that there's these thermal edges you can see on the right and what that means is that on the top copper there was a, a trace that cut through the, the signal plane um, and broke up like the one of the, the the ground planes and so heat gets trapped on one side and can't flow to the right left so you can see it's really cool over here but very hot over here and so that's one indication that your layout could be improved, right? So oftentimes, yes, you do have to break the, the planes on the top, but I think the point for this is that if you can avoid it, um, not breaking up the planes is a good idea. So the other is the inductor is also much hotter on the right side, and that's because the inductor, right, it's connected to the switch node on one side, which is then connected to the IC, so it gets it's very hot and it's kind of unavoidable you don't you can't connect the switch node to anywhere else but on the opposite side the switch nodes connect or the, the inductor is connected to the output so over here what happened they connected the the output uh, to and then the inductor together but then they went into some vias immediately and left very little area for the heat from the inductor to spread across the PCB so whereas over here they just have the conductor connected to the output and there's like a larger output plane so that helps dissipate the heat from the inductor so I guess the, the point of this is that is when you're doing layout in particular for a device that's using hot run you need to keep in mind that the heat 
spreads the best across the surface um, of, of the PCB and try not to break up those surface planes that are conducting heat. And so those would be the ground plane for the most part and then also the VIN. So one other thing that can help and we also recommend, right, is to put vias in. So these ground plane vias, they go into the ground plane that's in the mid layer too um, as well. And so that's also a good idea, but you shouldn't just rely only on um, vias, right? I think some ICs where they have maybe pins all the way around and a thermal pad in the middle, you know, the the heat can, you know, well, it has to go into vias because there's all these pins around the outside. But in the case of a hot rod package, and this one in particular, we've designed it so that the heat should spread across the planes on the V in, I'm sorry, on the ground, and then the V in over here. So I think that's like the just the the basics of what to remember, keep in mind as you're doing the layout for the LM53635 or any other hot rod package. Okay, so just in summary, uh, the, we talked a little bit about automotive hot rod and wettable flanks here, and uh, there's obviously some big performance advantages with automotive hot rod uh, with regards to EMI. You know, reducing the switch node dramatically helps with the EMI and also with efficiency. By reducing, getting rid of the wire bonds, you reduce the the RDS on the resistance of the the package and definitely boost the efficiency as well. So. This hot rod package, it's um, you know flip chip on lead is not a new technology, but uh, this um, it's not that common in automotive yet. But uh, our package is fully automotive qualified, and it also has wettable flanks, which uh, makes it easier to integrate with the existing uh, automotive PCB assembly processes as well. So if you have uh, more questions, uh, you know please try going to this website uh, ti.com slash product slash lm53635 dash q1 um, for more information on the lm53635 and you'll also find links to other information about the, the package development there thank you very much